We give God all the glory. We give God all the honor. We worship our Lord and our God, the great keeper of Israel, the one that gives us the living water, the one that can quench every thirst, the one that can satisfy the desires of every heart, the one that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or imagine, the one that makes a way where there seems to be no way. Father, we worship you, we praise you, we honor you. The one that loves us so much that he gave Jesus to die in our place. What a mighty God we serve. To him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we can ask for or imagine. We say blessed be his name this morning forevermore. Child of God, what a mighty God we serve. What a loving God. The God that sees it all. The God that sees you. The God that has promised us. The one that loves us so much that has come to attend to that issue that is burning in our heart. Burning in our home this morning. We say to him be all the praise. His desire is that his counsel alone will stand and his will alone be done today in our lives, in our homes and in our families in the name of Jesus. I am reading first of all from John chapter 4. I will be reading from verse 4 to verse 10. The Bible says, John chapter 4 from verse 4 to verse 10 and I read, He had to go through Samaria. On the way, eventually he came to a Samaritan village of Sychar, near the field that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired from the long journey, sat wearily beside the well at noontime. Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Please give me a drink. He was alone at that at the time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. The woman was surprised for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? Jesus replied, if you only knew the gift of the gift God has for you and who is speaking to you. You would ask me and I will give you living waters. Child of God, if we know who he is, if we know who talks to us, if we know Jesus Christ, the Bible says that we will ask him for the living water and he will give it to us. If we know who he is, the God that is mighty to save, the God that is able to exceed our imagination, the God that can make a way where there seems to be no way. Child of God. The God that knows how to end every war. The God that knows how to steal the storm. Child of God. That same God says, If you only knew the gift God has for you, and who is speaking to you, you would ask me, and I will give you living waters. What a mighty God. Child of God. There was a day that Jesus needed to pass through Samaria. Jesus needed to go through that village. Why? There was an issue that Jesus has to pass through to attend to. Child of God, once again on this mountain, the Lord is passing through this road. And there are things he wants to address in our lives and in our homes. There are things that the master wants to touch this morning. There are things that Jesus must attend to in our lives if we want to spend eternity with him. If we want to spend eternity with him, child of God, let us look at one of those things as we turn our Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 6 and we read from verse 17 to verse 23. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 2 Samuel okay. 6 to um, chapter 6 verse 17 to 23 so they brought the ark of the lord and set it in its place in the midst of the tabernacle that david had erected for it then david offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the lord and when david had finished offering burnt offerings and peace offerings he blessed the people in the name of the lord of hosts then he distributed among all the people among the whole multitude of israel both the women and the men, to everyone a loaf of bread, 
a piece of meat and a cake of raisins. So all the people departed every departed everyone to his house. Then David returned to bless his household, and Michal, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today, uncovering himself today in the eyes of the maze of his servants, as one of the base followed shamelessly uncovered himself. So David said to Michal, It was before the Lord who chose me instead of your father and all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord over Israel. Therefore, I will play music before the Lord and I will be even more ignified than this and will be humble in my own sight. But as for the maid servants of whom you have spoken, by them I will be held in honor. Therefore, Michal, the daughter of Saul, had no children to the day of the death. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Marvelous God. Great God. The one that must pass through Samaria. We give you all the glory. Child of God. What is our father talking about this morning? Listen to what happened one day in the house of David. David, the Bible makes us to understand that David had brought the ark of the Lord and set it in his place. Beside the special tent that David had prepared for it. David had prepared a place for the presence of God. David had brought the ark into the place where it ought to be. David had blessed the people. David has released the blessing upon the multitude, upon the nation of Israel. Child of God, David got home. What was the plan in the heart of David? The plan in the heart of David, the Bible says... According to the word of God in verse 20 of 2 Samuel chapter 6, when David returned home to bless his own family. David has blessed those that are outside. David has now returned home to drop the blessing upon his family. But child of God, do you know what happened? Marital crisis. Marital crisis. Problem in the home. The blessings of the Lord came to rest upon that home, came to rest upon the wife of that house, came to bring fruitfulness to that house. But child of God, do you know what happened? Quarreling started. Michal met her husband. What was she doing? She was displaying her spiritual state. A woman that had no regard for God. No regard for God, no regard for her husband. The blessing was coming to her home, child of God. But she, by her own self, with the spirit of Jezebel operating inside her life, challenged the blessings of God. And child of God, do you know what happened to her? The curse came down. The curse came down. The motive of God was to bring the blessing. That's the will of the father. But what came on that home? Barrenness came on that home. Child of God, the condition of our homes, the condition of marriages, aborting the will of God in the family. Why? The kind of spirits that operates in our homes, be it in the life of the man or be it in the life of the woman. The spirit of Jezebel, the spirit that works contrary to the release of the purpose of God. Child of God, this is it right there. The reason why Jesus needed to pass through Samaria. The issues of the home, that once upon a time it was ought to be a blessing of fruitfulness, but it turned into barrenness in a family. Why? The thing that is inside us. David, a man so anointed of God. David, a man so full of love for the Lord. But the wife of David did not have the same spirit that David had. How come? He could speak the word of God, be a blessing to other people at outside. But in his own house, Jezebel's spirit was sitting there. Jezebel's spirit was sitting there. Child of God, why did the curse came? Because as long as Michal was barren, what happened? Her relationship with David produced nothing. David was also barren in that area. Beloved, do you know why? Let's turn our Bibles to Ephesians chapter 5. As I read from verse 21 to verse 33, the Bible says, And further, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. For wives, 
This means submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For a husband is the head of his wife as Christ is the head of the church. He is the savior of his body, the church. As the church submits to Christ, so you wives should submit to your own husband in everything. For husbands, this means love your wives. Just as Christ loved the church, he gave up his life for her. To make her holy and clean, washed by the clean cleansing of God's word. And he did this to present her to himself as a glorious church without spots or wrinkle or any other blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as they love their own bodies. For a man who loves his wife actually shows love for himself. No one hates his own body, but feeds and cares for it, just as Christ cares for the church, and we are members of his body. As the scripture says, a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united as one. This is a great mystery, but it's an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one. So again I say, each man must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Beloved, what happened in the house of David? The Bible says, husband, this means love your wife as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her to make her holy, clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. He did this to present her to himself as a glorious church without spots or wrinkle or any other blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. Did Michal stand before God, holy and without fault? It was the duty of David, child of God, an anointed man of God, full of faith and full of favor with God. To see that the faith, the Christian faith rules over his home. But what happened? David blessed others outside. But when he came home, oh, Jesus is not in the heart of the wife. Jesus is not in the heart of the wife. Meanwhile, it is the responsibility of a husband to see that that wife is cleansed and that wife is who God has called her to be. And beloved child of God, because that work was not done in that home. What happened when he, an anointed man, came home? What will he meet at home? The spirit of Jezebel. And at immediately what happened? Did the blessing fall? God released the curse. God released the curse. Child of God. Despite the fact that David was so anointed, the curse came down. Marital crisis. Beloved, let's turn our Bibles once again to 1 Samuel chapter 25. As you read for us, please, verse 3 to verse 6. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 1 Samuel 25, verse 3 to 6. The name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife, Abigail. And she was a, good, a woman of good understanding and a beautiful appearance. But the man was harsh and evil in his, do, in his doings. He was of the house of Caleb. When David heard in the wilderness that Nabal was sharing his sheep, David sent ten young men. And David said to the young men, Go up to Carmel, go to Nabal, and greet him in my name. And thus you shall say to him who lives in prosperity, Peace be to you, peace be to your house, and peace be to all that you have. Amen. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we have served. The God that never leaves us in the dark. Beloved, did you hear the word of the Lord? The Bible says in verse 3 of First Samuel chapter 25, This man's name was Nabal. And his wife, Abigail, was a sensi sensible and beautiful woman. But Nabal, a descendant of Caleb, was crude and mean in all his dealings. What a description. What a combination. Godly woman, godly character. Mixing with a man who is a wicked man. A cruel man. The Bible says he is mean in everything he does. Do you see combination? And because of that, what happened in that home? Marital crisis. What was the agenda of God for coming to that family? The Bible makes us to understand in verse 6. It says, peace and prosperity to you, your family, and everything you own. 
That was what God brought into that home. Peace, prosperity on everything that neighbor owned. But child of God, did the blessing rest on that home? Let us understand as we read verse, verse 36 to verse 38, please. First Samuel 25, 36 to 38. Now Abigail went to Nabal, and there he was, holding a feast in his house, like the feast of a king. And Nabal's heart was merry within him, for he was very drunk. Therefore she told him nothing, little or much, unto morning light. So it was in the morning when the wine had gone from Nabal, and his wife had told him these things, that his heart died within him, and he became like a stone. Then it happened that it happened after about ten days that the Lord struck Nabal and he died. Hallelujah. What a mighty God. Look at the atmosphere of that home again. When Abigail, a godly woman, came to that house, what was the spiritual state? The man was holding a party. The man was in charge. The spirit of rebellion everywhere. Drunk, child of God, full of bitterness of heart. That is the atmosphere that made that, that that house was in. Meanwhile, when David came there, his assignment there was to release the blessing, just as we saw in verse 6. But child of God, what happened in that home? The curse came down. The curse came down. Sickness came down. Sickness came down. Stroke came on that man. And what happened? Judgment. God killed him. God killed him. Marital crisis, the atmosphere in the house brings down pain, brings down sorrow, brings down things that is not the will of God for the home. Why? The law of God is broken. The law of God is broken. Many children of God are suffering all manner of pain and affliction in their homes. Why? Wrong combination. Going outside the will of God opens the door for all manner of spirit to take over the house. And when that spirit is in operation in that house, what happens? Pain. Pain. If not for the mercy of God, look at the death that would have come on that entire family. On that entire family would have come under the rod of God's judgment. Beloved, let's turn our Bibles to Acts chapter 5 as we read from verse 1 to verse 11, please. Acts 5, verses 1 to 11. But a certain man named Ananias, with Sapphira his wife, sold a possession, and he kept back part of the proceeds, his wife also being aware of it, and brought a certain part of the a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? while it remained was it not your own and after it was sold was it not in your own control why have you conceived these things in your heart you have not lied to men but to god five then ananias hearing these words fell down and breathed his last and breathed his last so great fear came upon all those who heard these things and the young men arose and wrapped and wrapped him up carried him out and buried him now it was about three hours later when his wife came in not knowing what had happened and peter answered her tell me whether you sold the land for so much she said yes for so much then peter then peter said to her how is it that you have agreed together to test the spirits of the lord look the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out then immediately she fell at his feet and bred his last and the young man came in and found her dead and carrying her out, buried her by her husband. So the great fear came upon all the church and upon all who heard these things. Amen. Hallelujah. Child of God, among the people of God, the Lord did something that put fear in the heart of the people of God. That was after Jesus had resurrected. The Lord did something that made believers to tremble in their hearts. What did God do? God killed a believer and killed his wife as well. Why did God do that? Marital crisis. Do you know the case of Ananias and his wife? The love of money. The love of money. The love of money 
opening up a polluted atmosphere in the house. The love of money. The Bible makes us to understand in Acts chapter 5, Peter said, verse 3, why, has, uh, why have you let Satan fill your heart? I lied against the Holy Spirit. You kept some of the money for yourself. What happened in that home? The love of money filled the heart. Bring it down to our homes. Bring it down to the homes of the people of God. One of the number one problem there is money matters. It fills the heart. It fills the heart. And child of God, what did the love of money do on that home? It brought down the judgment of God. It brought down the anger of God. It brought down, child of God, death upon that home. Why? The love of money. Yes, the Bible says, wife, submit. But beloved child of God, Sapphira did it without wisdom and without understanding. What did the word of God say in Ephesians chapter 5? And I read from verse 20, I read verse 21. And further, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Beloved, did you hear? Wife, are we hearing? The Bible says, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. That's the foundation of sub submission. It is the will of God that our submission as husband and as wife should be out of reverence for Christ. In the life of Ananias and Sapphira, was Christ reverenced? Was the Holy Spirit reverenced? No, the Holy Spirit was not reverenced. The Holy Spirit was not reverenced. The spirit of Satan was reverenced. The spirit of the love of money was reverenced. So when and when Sapphira was submitting to her husband, she submitted to man above God. God killed her. God killed her. Submission in reverence to Christ. We can't submit to God in reverence to the devil. Satan had filled the heart of Ananias. And so Ananias was worshipping the devil right there. When Sapphira came, Ananias spoke to Sapphira. All Sapphira remembered is, is my husband. Let me submit. Sapphira did not remember that her submission should be in reverence to Jesus Christ. And when she agreed with that thing that was an abomination before God, do you know what happened? God killed Ananias. God killed Sapphira. God left their children without father, without mother. Right there in the presence of God. It was such a strange occurrence that the people of God became afraid. Why? God wants us to become afraid of his judgment. God wants us to learn from it and fear God. What happened after that ha ha happened to Ananias and Sapphira? What happened in the families of the people of God when God showed them that example? Hey Lord, do you think homes were the same? No. He made homes to begin to see God as the head of that family. He made submission to be in reference to God. Child of God, marital crisis. Marital crisis, what do they do? Marital crisis, it brings down the anger of God. It brings down the judgment of God. It terminates the purpose of God in the home. Let's take further example from 2 Samuel chapter 12. Please read for us from verse 7 to verse 12, please. 2 Samuel 12, 7 to 12. Then Nathan said to David, You are the man that says the Lord God of Israel. I anointed you king over Israel, and I delivered you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house and your master's wife's own to your keeping, and gave you the house of Israel and Judah. And if that has been too little... I also would have given you much more. Why have you despised the commandments of the Lord to do, to do evil in his sight? You have killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword. You have taken his wife to be your wife, and you have killed him with the sword of the people of Ammon. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house because you have despised me. And you have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Hmm. 11. 
that says the Lord, behold, I will raise an adversity against you from your own house. And I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor. And he shall lie with your wives in the sight of, in the sight of this son. 12, for you did it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel, before the son. Amen. Hallelujah. Child of God, marital crisis brings down the anger of God. What happened in this home again? Adultery. 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 What happened? God came to express his anger. God came to sign something over that family. God came to, God permitted that there will be no more peace in the house of David. There will be rebellion. Another man will take his wife. The curse came down on that home. What happened in that case? Adultery. David took another man's wife. The same spirit that is working in many homes. The spirit of adultery. The spirit of adultery. You find out the children of that family so rebellious, so disobedient. Child of God, at times you don't know. The seeds that father and mother are planting in the home. Releasing the curse over the family, child of God. Was it only David? What about Uriah's wife? She also committed adultery. Let's look at 2 Samuel 11. And I am reading from verse 26 to verse 27. The Bible says, when Uriah's wife heard that her husband was dead, she mourned for him. When the period of mourning was over, David sent for her and brought her to the palace. And she became one of David's wives. Then she gave birth to a son, but the Lord was displeased with what David had done. Uriah's wife, wicked woman. A woman that could commit adultery. Do you want to tell me that Uriah did not, Uriah's wife did not know what killed her husband? She was mourning him, but she had a hand in his death. Why? The love of material things. Who, who doesn't want to sleep with the king? That's her thought. A married woman. David was in the palace. David was a king. David sent for her. She couldn't say no. She couldn't stand her ground. Why? Her eyes are in the palace. Royalty. She wants it. The same thing happening in our time. The same thing happening in our time. Love of money. Love of money. Foundation of crisis in the home. You see, young girls now, they don't want to start from foundation. Looking for a ready-made already made man. The spirit of Uriah's wife. The spirit of Uriah's wife. It was so strong, the child of God. This woman could watch a man that killed her husband. No conscience, no fear of God, no fear of man. She went ahead and still married David. The spirit of Jezebel. The spirit of wickedness. What did God do? God killed her child. The baby she carried for nine months. God killed it. Because child of God, sin brings down the judgment of God. Sin brings down the judgment of God. Uriah's wife committed adultery. She knew how her husband died. She knew that definitely David had a hand in it. But yet she married him. You see how we compromise our stand because of material things. For what to eat, for what to drink. For royalty, for comfort. We break the standard of God and we think that nothing happens. Child of God, when we break the hedge, the serpent bites. God himself allows it to happen. Marriage. Marriage. Union. Born out of God's vision to produce God's purpose. Marriage was not the will of man. Marriage is the will of God. Marriage is the dream of God. Marriage is the vision of God. Marriage came from God. And so God is very, very interested in marriages. You see, in Genesis chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 21 to verse 25. The Bible says, So the Lord caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. When the man slept, the Lord took out one of the man's ribs and closed up the opening. Then the Lord, then the Lord God made a woman out of the rib. And he brought her to the man. At last the man exclaimed, This is one, this one is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She will be called woman because she was taken from man. This 
explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife and the two are united as one now the man and his wife were naked were both naked but felt no shame the purpose of god in marriage that man will sleep and allow god to do the work that's the purpose of marriage the work that he came to do is that man and woman will be together and they will not be ashamed. They were naked. They were not ashamed. God did not create marriage for shame and reproach. But beloved, do you know that because of one thing that is happening and is still happening, pain came, nakedness came. What happened in Genesis chapter 3 from verse 1 to verse 7? This is the word of the Lord. The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. One day he asked the woman, Did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? Of course we may eat the fruit from the trees in the garden. The woman replied, It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we, we are not allowed to eat. God said, You must not eat it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. You won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be open as soon as you eat it, and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. The woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful and its food looks delicious. She wanted the wisdom it would give her, so she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it too. At that moment, their eyes were opened and suddenly felt shame at their nakedness. So they sought fig trees together to cover themselves. People that God created never to be ashamed. Child of God, shame came into that marriage. Shame came into that marriage. Why? Conversation with the serpent. Conversation with the serpent. Conversation with the spirit of Satan is the reason why the judgment of God comes upon that home. Do you know what happened in that home? After Eve spoke with the serpent, and the serpent gave her the forbidden fruit to eat, child of God, God drove two of them from the garden of Eden. Do you know the judgment of God upon that family? Cain and Abel were supposed to be birthed into the garden. But beloved child of God, that judgment that came upon that spirit left the family in shambles so much that a brother killed his own brother. Why? The serpents came in. Deception came in. What fills our hearts? If she forgot that she has wisdom, Eve began to receive communication from the serpent. And do you know what Adam did? Adam came and stood beside her. He couldn't stand his ground in agreement with God. And what happened? Marital crisis to the point that people, that human beings did not give birth to. God produced them direct in his wisdom, in his power. They had the first set of children. And what happened in that home? Two brothers, just two of them. One killed the other. Think about it. What is the peace and the joy in a home that a brother kills his other brother? What peace and joy is there in that home again? How did it start? Communication with the serpent. Communication with the serpent. It was Michael's character, disobedience to God, and her husband that brought the curse. Nabal's char character. Crude, mean, wicked. He brought down the curse. Ananias and Sapphira, love of money. Both of them love money. What did he do? He destroyed their home. David lost. Adultery. Uriah's wife lost. Adultery. Quest for material possession. And the list goes on and on. The nature of the serpents. He brought down the judgment of God. Child of God, what is happening in our homes? Do you know that when we break God's law, judgment comes down? Do you know that when we break God's law, judgment comes down no matter how anointed we are? David was so anointed. The Bible describes him as a man after God's own heart. 
as a man after God's own heart. A man that God said, if you have wanted more, I would have given you much, much more. Did God withdraw the judgment? The judgment came down on the life of David. When we look at the heart of God, look at the heart of God, look at the heart of God, look at the pain that the Lord used to speak, beloved, in, 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 in 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 9, look at the heart of God. He said, why then have you despised the word of the Lord and done this horrible deed? The question that God asks us in our marriage, why do we despise the word of God? Why do we rebel against his standard? Say, so why do you do this horrible thing? He said, for you have murdered Uriah, the Hittite, with the sword of the Ammonites, and stolen his wife. Whose sword did he use? Is it the same sword he used to bring down Goliath? No, he used the sword of his enemies. The sword of the Amorites. Child of God, when we bring the style of the world, when we bring as children of God, we use the method of the world. Child of God, it brings down the judgment of God. The sword that David used to do what he did was not the sword of God. It wasn't the sword that God put in his hands. It was the sword of unbelievers. And the moment he used the wrong sword, beloved, the Bible says in verse 11, this is what the Lord says, because you have done, because of what you have done, I will curse your own household to rebel against you. I will give your wives to other men before your very eyes. And you will go to bed with them in public view. You did it secretly, but I will make this happen to you openly in the sight of all Israel. God did this to the man he loves. Why? He despised the word of God. God himself made sure that this came to pass in the life of David. The Bible says you did your own in the secret. I will expose you. Did God not expose David? Did God not expose David? Did Absalom not re re rebel against his father? Child of God, despite the fact David was anointed, the judgment came down. Let's fear God. That's the reason why Jesus Christ said, Oh, I must pass through Samaria this morning. He must pass through our homes this morning. He must pass through our families this morning. He must pass through our marriages this morning. That's the reason why. Because abominations are taking place in our home. And yet we are blessed, we are anointed, we are crying. Not knowing that is our conversations with the serpent that is opening the door of judgment. That instead of the blessing resting upon that home, the curse is what we are seeing. The curse is what we are seeing. Beloved, once again, let's turn our Bibles to John chapter 4 and see something from that scripture. John chapter 4. Look at what... Look at the reason why Jesus, one of the reasons why he said he must pass through Samaria. Why? The Samaritan woman. He has to pass through her. Look at what the Bible says in John chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 16 to verse 18. The Bible says, go and get your husband. Jesus told her, I don't have a husband. The woman replied, Jesus said, you are right. You don't have a husband for you have had five husbands. And you aren't even married to the one you are living with now. You certainly spoke the truth. Beloved, what was happening there? Marital issues in the life of this precious woman. Jesus had to go through there to attend to it. But what did God tell Je What did Jesus tell this Samaritan woman? Child of God, let it settle in our heart. He said, go get your husband. Go get your husband. Child of God. Husband and wife. Jesus will say, wife, where is your husband? Jesus will also ask husband, husband, where is your wife? What are we going to say? What are we going to say? Could she hide it from God? Jesus knew everything. She stood before the Lord. She said, I don't have a husband. She wasn't the one that told Jesus that she had five husbands. Jesus said, you, you have had five husbands. You have had five. The one you are even living with now is not your husband. God knows what is happening in our home. God knows what is happening in our home. 
We may cover it up, but God sees it, child of God. And he's going to ask us for account. He came to that woman to ask for account. Do you know what settled that woman's case? Jesus told her. Jesus told her, you certainly spoke the truth. The truth. That we can come to Jesus with the truth. He, did he come to destroy her? No. He said, Jesus replied, if you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me and I will give you living waters. What's in the heart of Jesus Christ? That we will talk to him. Because God has a gift for us. Marriage is a gift. God has a gift of rest for us. His plan is not shame, it's not reproach. God has a gift. And Jesus says in his word, if you only knew the gift God has for you, and who you are speaking to, what happened to Eve? Eve did not know the gift that God had for her. Eve was speaking to the serpent. And as long as Eve was speaking to the serpent, what happened? Both her, her husband, her unborn children came under the judgment. But Jesus is saying, if you know who is talking to you, I have living waters. I can give it to you. I can quench your tests. Child of God, there is no situation going on in our homes that the Lord cannot handle. Do you know that this Shunammite woman had a ministry? She had a ministry. She was an evangelist. She had a ministry. Look at it in verse 39. The Bible says, many Samaritans from the village believed in Jesus because the woman has said, he told me everything I ever did. She was the one to reach out to the Samaritans and bring them to Jesus Christ. She was the one that God had given the assignment to deliver that city to the Lord Jesus Christ. But beloved child of God, because of husband issue, she could not fulfill her destiny. Jesus had to come. And beloved, do you know what happened to her? Let's read further. From verse 39 to verse 42. Many Samaritans from the village believed in Jesus because the woman had said, he told me everything I ever did. When they came out to see him, they begged him to stay in the village. So he stayed for two days, long enough for many more to hear his message and believe. Then they said to the woman, now we believe, not because of what you told us, but because we have heard him ourselves. Now we know that he is indeed the savior of the world. What a great reviver. Jesus had to stay with them for two days. Many more came to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. But do you know that marital crisis would have aborted this assignment in the lives of this woman? In the lives of this woman. And that's why today, child of God, Jesus is passing this road again. Because he wants to give us the living waters. That we quench the fire that is burning in our homes. If we will come to him and be truthful before him, he said, there is a gift that God has for us. There is a gift that God has for us. The Lord is interested in our homes. The Lord is not interested that one we should, we, he, he told the wife, the, he told the woman, go get your husband. Child of God, do you know that at the end of it, this woman's five women, five husbands, do you think Jesus did not meet them? Jesus had, one of the things that Jesus was looking for were the five men. Because Jesus kept saying it, his word cannot return to him void. Even while he was speaking to the woman, he said, go get your husband. That's who Jesus sent her to go get. I tell you, she brought the five men to Jesus Christ. Because if Jesus wanted to see the five men, nothing will stop them from coming. And so it's the will of God that our homes be redeemed. It's the will of God that the mercy he showed the house of Noah be our portion. That Noah and his household were saved. But do you know, no matter how terrible the situation is, all he needs is for one person to talk with Jesus in spirit and in truth. All is for one person to stand at the gap. All is for one person to agree with the Lord and the counsel of God will stand. 
That's what the Lord is looking for. He has the living waters. He can quench our thirst. He can quench the fire that is burning in our homes. But we have to agree with him. We have to align with his purpose. We have to fall down. What, what brought deliverance to this woman? She did everything that Jesus asked her to do. She followed his instructions. She followed his direction. Jesus has the key. He has the key to any situation in our homes. If we can submit to him. If we are ready to follow his direction. What does his word say? In John chapter 7 and verse 37 and I read. On the last day, the climax of the festival, Jesus stood and shouted to the crowd. Anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Do you see? Are you thirsty for peace in your home? Are you thirsty for the will of God to stand? Jesus said, anyone that is thirsty should come. Eve was thirsty. She went to the serpent. He scattered everything. Anyone that is thirsty should come. Jesus met up with the Samaritan woman. And after that contact, what happened? A village was saved. A village was saved. The counsel of God stood. Child of God, in this end time, many are losing their divine assignment because of marital crisis. Many are throwing God's promises away because of marital crisis. But this morning, Jesus has to pass through Samaria to tell us what to do if we will come to him to receive direction, to receive wisdom, to receive his counsel. If we will come to him, the master knows what to do. The master knows what to do. If we will come to him, there is a gift that God has for that home. It does not matter how battered or shattered or scattered it is. He is the potter. He can put it together again. He can put it together again. If we will allow him into our ship. If we will allow him into our home. Child of God. He wants to settle those issues. He wants to bring joy. Child of God. Why not invite Jesus into that situation today? Why not allow his counsel to stand? Why not agree with the one that has the key of David? Why not agree with the one that opened it and no man shut it? Why not agree with the author of marriage to say, Jesus, I come before you today and I agree with you. I'm ready to submit to your will. I'm ready to submit to your word. Lord, I'm coming to you in spirit and in truth. I want you to give me direction on what to do in my home so that your presence can rest in that home. If we will come, he is more than able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or imagine. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you. Give him the glory. Thank you. Give him the glory. 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 He deserves the highest praise. He is the all-wise God. He is the all-knowing God. With him all things are possible, with him nothing is impossible. He is the God of all flesh, there is nothing that is too hard for him. He is the potter, we are the clay. It does not matter how shattered it is, he can put it together again. He is the God of again and again. He is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or imagine in that home. He can put it together again. He can hear you clearly. He wants to wipe your tears. He is the way maker. He is the promise keeper. He can do it. It does not matter how clumsy. He can put it afresh. He can give you a new beginning. He is the Lord. He is the Lord. He is the Lord. He is the Lord. The gift that the Father has for us is a great gift. It's a great gift. Oh, that is cancer we stand. That is will will be done in our marriage. That the blessing will come down in our homes, not the cause. That the blessing will come. That the blessing will come. It is the will of the Father to release the blessing, not the cause. Not the cause is the blessing. That's the heart of the master. If we will agree with him today. If we will agree with him today. If we will agree with him today. If we will align with him today. His counsel will stand. His purpose will stand. His name will be glorified.